Thank you for joining me to this session in which I will present how new collections are added to the knowledge bases and CDI. As Scott uh, introduced me, my name is Tamar Gano, and I am the Content Product Manager at Xlibris. On the agenda for today's session, we'll begin with the context of new content because it's so much more than what's new on the market for all involved parties. I will proceed with an overview of where does new content come from, followed by where does the content go to. I will then dive in deeper to a detailed explanation of the ingest process and will conclude with the new workflow for new content. Let's begin with the new content and context. When we talk about new content, we actually mean new metadata. The metadata can accompany newly created materials or can be a new way to describe materials that have been around for a while. But in any case, new metadata has many implications and is always a part of a larger picture. First of all, quality. When the metadata is of high quality, standardized and up to date, the impact is huge. The material can be discovered, used with other materials and utilized in various ways. But metadata can sometimes be non-standard. And then we need to consider what is the best use of it? How can we take what we have and make the best of it? And also we need to consider how does the quality factor affect metadata that merges with other metadata and create rules to select the better quality or make a whole that is larger than the sum of its parts. The second aspect of metadata is diversity. One of Xlibris values in the organization is diversity. And new metadata is a great place to materialize this value and have it practically implemented. Currently, I think it's safe to say we have most of the major providers represented in the knowledge bases and discovery. Most of the content is in English, and here is where we can really make an impact with non-English material. Seeking non-English material from providers around the world represents how content operations teams promote the value of a diverse knowledge base and index and improve representation of a wealth of metadata. And in turn, the growing diverse mountain of content carries with it equity for institutions and providers that can, that can find and be found in our products and inclusion as we keep seeking ways to improve visibility for various disciplines and regional content. That brings me to the next aspect of new metadata, which brings opportunities to increase cooperation with the community and the industry. By reviewing content requests from institutions around the world, we get to know the librarians, what they are using, how they are using it, what is important for their end users, and this circles back to our communication with the providers, which are the third vertex of this triangle. And by increasing our cooperation, we improve their usage and expand their outreach. Other important stakeholders in the industry are also standard organizations like NISO, with which we take part of their meetings and discussions, always looking for creative ways to improve metadata representations. And last, New metadata is a catalyst for technological opportunities in a way that whenever we come across a new form of metadata or a new form of material delivery or material type or anything new that is related to metadata, this is an opportunity for us to improve our processes, review workflows, and find ways to adapt to requirements and even affect products, not only knowledge bases and CDI, but interlibrary inter loan, research output management, and more. For example, we received a request from an institution to add an open access database of monologues from theatrical plays. This material type does not have any standardized metadata. So we must consider the quality of the available metadata and how to express it best in our systems probably suitable for CDI and not the knowledge bases because we don't want to see bibliographic records and portfolios for monologues. We might need to adjust our systems or add a new ingestion method to properly address all the non-standardized metadata. But think about having open access, freely available monologues presented alongside critical peer-reviewed articles about these monologues or about the playwright 
with the location of the physical play itself on your shelves. Think about the impact of the usage for the provider and the benefits of having monologues from all over the world presented for drama students in Germany, Italy, Japan, Mexico. From all these aspects, my main point is that new metadata is an engine for growth. And adding a new provider, a new collection, enriching existing metadata with better feeds, adding controlled vocabularies, all these drive ex libris to explore frontiers and pave new roads. And since all our products are about managing the metadata, new content is an important part of innovation across the board. So what does constitute as new content? We'll start with new providers or providers ex libris has not worked with yet. That requires a manual process and a lot of education on both sides. Our devoted provider relations team is managing these provider accounts and walking them through a lot of new information to understand. The differences between knowledge bases and CDI, what does it mean for the metadata they send us, legal implications of having their metadata available worldwide for subscribers and non-subscribers, and more. And of course, explaining that we only use the metadata and not the content itself. New products. We also receive metadata for new products from providers we already work with. This can be metadata for already available items that have been repackaged and sold as different products, but it can also be metadata for completely new items that currently do not exist in our system. And even new products such as online courses that for librarians and end users might seem strange that we do not have this material type because we have other content from that provider. This specific material type has different metadata and it needs to adapt to our different method of fetching and ingesting. Annual collections. That is a very specific type of new metadata. Sometimes it could also include a theme or discipline and it usually replaces a collection that was sold in the previous year. Providers can sell these bundled titles either as a subscription or in perpetuity. And it means that institutions are interested in finding these collections, both current and historic. They are also unique in that there is very little difference than the, than the previous year, meaning most of the titles within that collection have remained, while few titles have been removed or added. Authority vocabularies. We currently have 47 authority vocabularies in Alma Community Zone, which allows subject, places, and names from a variety of regions to be used within the metadata editor. Having this regional metadata available at your fingertips promotes diversity, equity, and inclusion as it allows multicultural representation of the metadata. Different manifestation for existing content also counts as new content. For example, from a KBART file which holds the minimum information required to create a bibliographic record, a separate file is needed to enrich that bib record and to receive a rich mark record. This requires a different feed, which usually requires separate configuration and QA. Also receiving granular metadata, such as book chapters and articles on top of titles, requires different practice as it also means usability for CDI, and not only for the knowledge bases. Even migrating to a different platform, which happens quite often, or getting metadata to represent a collection with portfolios rather than a database level, it all requires different configuration. And the reason is that we are adding metadata that can be automated. We'll get to that later, but any change like that constitutes as new metadata because it requires manually evaluating a new file and generating an automated flow. The last type of new content is local content, such as an institutional repository and libguides that is managed in the institutional level in CDI, or contributed collections that are maintained by a contributing institution in C Alma CZ and are meant to fill in a gap that cannot be managed by the providers. You can see there are different types of metadata that are considered new content, all of which have different impacts on the community and on Xlibris products, and all are viewed within the context of quality, diversity, community and industry, 
and technological opportunities. Titles that are added to existing collection are not in this list because they are part of an existing framework and are being managed on a routine basis as part of the automation process that is already configured for each collection. Routinely adding new titles to existing collections usually come in a predictable format that follows an existing pattern for the available collections, so it is not part of the new content workflow I will present in this session. Requests for new content come from three main sources. Providers reach out to us via a contact form on our website or through ongoing communication they have established with the provider relations team. The community also lets us know about content gaps, either through the working groups, such as the content working group that addresses content topics in all products, or the CZ management group, through support cases, NURSE, which stands for New Enhancement Request System, that is the mechanism through which Igloo and Aluna members prioritize requests for all other products of Xlibris, and Idea Exchange, which is now the main source for new requests. I will explain more about it later in this session. And finally, another source for new content requests is internal, Xlibris sources, such as sales, professional service, customer success, cross product and support teams that notify the content operations team about content gaps that should be addressed to better support the community around the world. New content goes through many stops on its journey to reach your end users. It starts as the provider generates new content or starts selling a new product. The metadata that describes the content should follow and that is our cue for our provider relations specialists who verify what metadata is available and what kind of feed can we receive from the provider. The feed type determines if we need legal approval. KBARTs do not require a legal agreement, but discovery and enrichment do require a legal agreement. Once the type of feed is determined and the legal side has been settled, we can review what is the usability of the metadata and I will refer to that later in the session. Usability determines whether the metadata can be used in the knowledge bases, CDI or both. After the destination of the metadata has been settled, automation configuration is added if needed for updating dynamic collections. Automation is not required for closed non-updating collections. And this completes the journey for new content from being new to being part of the content Xlibris maintains. This is a general overview of the process, and all new content goes through this process to some extent. Now, where does the content go to? We need to evaluate the metadata usability, meaning a deep analysis of the metadata, which will determine how we can use it and where. The first parameter is the format in which we receive the metadata. This determines if the metadata can be used in the knowledge bases, CDI, or both. XML, MARC, Excel, these file types impact how we can use the metadata stored within these files. Second is the update frequency. Is it a one-time update for a closed collection which will be available in perpetuity for the libraries that purchased it or subscribed to it? Or will it be an updating collection with removals, additions, and edits? And if so, what is expected to be the update frequency? How often should we look for a new file in the server? Is it metadata for full text or not? If it's not full text, then it cannot go to Alma. Does the metadata have identifiers? And if not, how can we match the linking information to the bibliographic record to make sure we do not create duplicate bibliographic records when all we need is another set of access points? And what is the metadata granularity? Is it metadata for database level and we can only have a database with no titles associated with it? Or is it a collection with titles? Each title's linking is derived from the main collection's linking information. Or does the metadata describe the article level itself? Analyzing these parameters, understanding what is the quality and accuracy of the metadata, and making sure it can be properly sustained automatically is a challenge for the provider relations team and that will determine where the metadata will appear. 
And this is a general outline of the feed and the output that can be achieved by it. We have file examples for KBART only or KBART, KBART plus MARC file, KBART plus MARC file plus article metadata, or maybe KBART with an XML for articles without the MARC. And these different file formats show what is the output that can be achieved, either ALMA, SFX, and 360, ALMA and 360 enrichment, or CDI. The only option where the legal department is not involved for signing an agreement is the first KBART only and the last for databases. Now let's take a closer look inside the ingest process for new content. It all starts with provider relations outreach to the provider, and it does require provider responsiveness. Once we have established a relationship with the providers, after seeing the benefit of having their metadata available in our discovery and delivery systems, we engage both parties' legal teams for CDI feed and any mark suitable feeds. This review is also required for open access content because we need to be sure it is permanently open access and not proprietary, and that it is not op hybrid open access. Then the technical teams are in motion. Delivery, which is ALMA, SFX, and 360 knowledge base, discovery, and linking teams analyze and build the setup that will allow automation and ingestion of updates. Things that are established in these teams include what is the linking syntax, should this be a link in record collection or link resolver or both, what is the header or tag that we should be looking for in order to properly add the information for authors, year of publication, and that sort of thing. Sometimes it will require re-engaging with the providers because there are missing fields in the MARC records or the dates are stored in the ISSN column in the KBAR. This is critical, not only for setting up the collection, but also for any future updates. We aim for automation, so any setup needs to be aligned with any future files we will receive. Once these wrinkles have been smoothed out, the operations team ingests the metadata and we communicate this in our knowledge center through provider knowledge articles, release notes, and roadmap plans. Looking closer into the knowledge bases content ingestion process. The team begins with a manual process that starts with analyzing the file that provider relations sent. Then they create a collection envelope, which has the name of the collection, description, and other technical details. And then they configure a specific automation mechanism, which will review any file that is being added in an agreed location for updates and changes. Then the file will be loaded to a test environment and the team will review the outcome and if it displays the fields properly. No duplications created, portfolios attached to the right web records, etc. And then it is loaded for production. In between these stages, you can see that there are QA processes that make sure to alert us if there are any errors, such as having all portfolios appended to one web record. The next phase is the execution of the automation configuration and operating for any update received for the content. The process includes fetching any update file from an agreed location, comparing with what we currently have, and then moving forward, either not changing anything as there was nothing to update, and the new file is exactly the same as the file we already have. If the information in the new file is different than what we currently have, then the automation process converts the metadata to update and normalize the current metadata on a test environment. And after QA, it will be loaded to the production with reports in the CZ update task list. If needed, manual review can be done and, by, and any follow-up corrections and provider outreach for follow-up. We currently have over 35,400 collections in automation, and we're aiming that any new collection that is being added will be automated. This goes to providers that send us one collection or a hundred of collections. Configuring the automation is a manual process because there are variants for each collection. Even if they come from the same provider, the metadata is not necessarily formatted the same as the other collections files, so we need to review each file before setting up the automation process and making sure that any future update will conform with the original file with which we configure the collection. 
That is also why we need the new collection process for zero title databases, because we're checking where else can the collections go and if they are suitable for CDI. And looking closer into the CDI process, the manual work is also needed when first establishing new feeds of metadata. It begins with a sample review, checking the sample of the metadata that we receive from provider relations team in order to better understand what the provider is sending. We ask for a sample because for CDI, the files can get really big. Then the acquisition part is the parameters of the way the files get to ingestion. For example, API, which requires code to fetch the file. Then an analysis is done to see how we define the content mapping so that when the metadata has specific tags, delimiters, and so on, it will be read properly and populate the right fields. Linking information for properly linking the metadata to the results, as well as rights, who should have access to the content itself, and what do you need to activate in ALMA in order to see the results in CDI. And finally, loading the new metadata to CDI. The next step is automation for ongoing updates. The process begins with looking for new files, fetching them, transforming and normalizing based on the mapping configuration and updating the records. Once the manual work is done, the metadata is no longer considered new content and it is part of the existing content that is available in CDI and the knowledge bases. All the quality assurance processes are intended to make sure that the metadata we add is usable for the library and end users. But what is usability? We came across several interesting examples where usable has a wide definition, such as company profiles, which is the equivalent of yellow pages for companies. The analysis of this material type showed that very brief record levels will be created in Alma for this type of content, so the usability in ALMA would be extremely low and it should go to CDI. It will be hard to retrieve bibliographic records. The unstandardized metadata that has no identifiers might link to wrong portfolios or create bib records that will be duplicated because there's not enough metadata to recognize there is already an existing bib record for the new portfolio. However, the community responded to the removal of these portfolios and BIB records. So we brought them back into the CZ. So although it is not the quality we would hope to see, the records are still in use as brief, brief BIB records. Usability depends on factors such as material types, but usability can also depend on the immediate avail availability factor. A survey in the last content webinar proved that brief metadata is enough to start with. The expectation is to have enriched full bib records down the road, but more than half of the responses in the question, would you prefer a richer record or a brief but immediate activation, prove that usability is a matter of perspective. Here are some other responses which you can read later when the presentation will be uploaded. But you can see that the end goal is to have enriched records, but to begin with, Brief can do just fine. So the bottom line for content operations is that we accommodate multiple solutions for a variety of metadata. And that is especially important when deciding on a workflow for new content, because analyzing and understanding the metadata before it enters the knowledge bases and CDI will determine how we use it, where, and eventually what librarians can activate for students, faculty members, and researchers. Systematic approach for new content is to being proactive in the content we're pursuing, automating as many aspects of the content ingestion process, and maximize the impact as we do not have infinite resources and we want to eventually add the metadata to as many products as possible we will reach out to the most enriched and whole set of metadata available. Through the three motives, we make the decision on where to add the metadata while maintaining the quality. The evaluation of new content workflow started in cooperation with the community towards the end of 2022. 
and aimed at improving these aspects as well as increasing transparency and building trust. In order to improve the workflow for new content, we looked for just for steps to identify bottlenecks, places that may hold back the process and slow it down. The requests for new content, if they come from providers and ex libris are more visible and direct. So the question was how to make the requests for new content from the community identified more efficiently and transparently so that we will not duplicate the requests and address them in a timely manner. The evaluation of metadata has great potential of slowing down the process because having legal details sorted out can take time and some back and forth discussions to clarify what is done with the metadata. The quality factor may also take time, especially for non-standard material because it requires being creative and searching for ways to improve the available metadata. Prioritizing the new content is a way to manage the flow of new content, especially as we know there is a peak towards the end of Q4 and beginning of Q1 for annual collections. The final approval step of setting up automation and finding other usability, for example, in enriching currently available metadata is the shortest step and it usually is not a bottleneck for the process. Request from the community for new content was the first step we wanted to evaluate and improve. We were looking for ways to make the process more transparent and reduce response time. Also, let the community have better insight as to what stage the request is. For that, after discussing with the content working group, we have decided to funnel all requests for new content to Idea Exchange. And to be clear, that means all requests for new collections, databases, enrichment, and authority vocabularies. Informing Ex Libris about missing titles that should be part of an existing collection does not fall within this category because it does not require analyzing and setting up a new collection, just adding one or more titles to an already existing collection, and it should be done through cases. So, why go through Idea Exchange? Well, it is transparent to the community. Everyone can vote, post, and see what is being reviewed and planned. Votes and comments can help us prioritize the requests and also better understand what the usability is. In Idea Exchange, we can also give room for regional content and non English content. This can help Ex Libris build a diverse knowledge base and index, improve the variety, cater to more disciplines, institutions, and providers. In Idea Exchange, we can also maintain a visible open to all archive of historical requests so that we can review previously requested content and see if providers were not able to cooperate or if specific content was already added. Idea Exchange is for posting requests for new content from existing or new providers. All existing provider requests will be reviewed weekly and marked as under review. For new providers, we will have nurse process to prioritize and give additional attention to regional and non-English content requests. Please note that as other nurse voting rounds, we can commit to make an outreach to the providers, but as you saw from the process, the request may not be fulfilled because of technical, legal, or other issues. So please bear in mind that a nurse request does not guarantee the content will be available in the way you expect it to be in the knowledge base in CDI or both. Looking at votes over the year and ideas posted over the year, we can see the trend is a decline in ideas posted for content until 2022. It can be accounted to the fact that most major providers are already represented in the knowledge bases and CDI. But since we declared the new process in the beginning of June 2023, we saw a peak in ideas, and that is the reason to the rise in requests posted in 2023. As I review weekly ideas posted for existing providers, I also go over historical requests and with the assistance of dedicated content working group members, I review older ideas and mark them as already supported, closed or under review. So currently for 2023, we already have 79 requests. 
looking at the total ideas status, those that were not those, those that were already reviewed, we can see that 31% are already supported, 35% are completed, 24% are closed, and 10% of the ideas are under review. And if we look in a, for a different uh, parameter in idea exchange requests, we can see that 60% of the requests posted between 2017 and 2022 are for new providers, and 40% are requests for co content from existing providers that we already have relationships with. Why is that? So first of all, many of these requests are for primary sources and some of them don't have any standardized metadata. That is why the metadata takes time for ingestion and adding. Most of these, ident most of these content uh, material types don't have any identifiers. So that also makes it difficult for us to create an automated feed that will add the content request and the materials into the knowledge bases and CDI properly without creating any duplications or appending to the wrong bibliographic records. And third, the requests for existing providers are for historical collections that are no longer sold. That is why we didn't receive any, up, any um, metadata from the providers for these collections. And to characterize new providers request type, most of it is regional non-English content. It, some of it is open access, which also presents a challenge for us to review if it's predatory content. Some of it is single titles of an institution or a research uh, institution that publishes one publication that cannot be added to any available uh, existing collection. Other requests are for enriching currently available content that the bibliographic record are too brief and authority vocabularies from regions across the world. So how to make a case for your idea? If you're using idea exchange to post a new idea, please start with checking if this idea was already posted and if it was, please vote for it that will increase the visibility of that idea and prioritize it. Second, think about where you would like to see the content. Do you think your end users will access CDI to, to search for this content or does it the type of content that requires bibliographic records and portfolios? It's very important to mark new or existing providers. If the content you're looking for comes from a provider that already has content in the knowledge bases and CDI, please mark it as existing providers. As I go over the idea exchange weekly and take out all existing providers and then review them. Provide any possible detail, including number of collections from the provider. If, if you need more than one collection, please mention it. If you have a contact person that could really speed things up, Add a link to the collection itself. It could be very helpful for us just to know exactly what you what you intend in your idea. And also mention if it's a different language in English, because that could help boost our diversity, uh, diversifying uh, process for the knowledge bases and CDI. So thinking about taking new content on a new path. We are aiming to use high quality metadata and looking for the right place for the best representation of the metadata, knowledge bases and or CDI. We're trying to diversify the knowledge bases and CDI and we do appreciate your help in that. And being transparent in new content requests, priorities and decisions. All in all, we're working transparently and collaboratively to get new content in the right place. So I would like to extend a special thanks to the content working group for helping the de design and execute this process. And especially Beth Jewell from the University of Arkansas and Cody Hackett from Kansas State University for a tremendous help on cleaning up the idea exchange from any historical requests. 
Your expertise and insights really got this project moving and the whole community has incredibly benefited from your input and efficiency. I would like to finalize to conclude my session with a uh, reminder that the LLA annual conference and exhibit will take place in June, uh, this June in Chicago. Please come and visit us in booth 1811 and join us for the different sessions and also the Clarivate Customer Appreciation Cocktail and Conversation on June 25. These are the general registration links. Also the upcoming Igloo 2023 event in Leuven in September. Looking forward to seeing you there. And if you haven't joined yet, please join the new content mailing list. It's a wonderful mailing list with a lot of interesting ideas and thoughts. So this is the link. Be happy to see you join. And that's it. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, tomorrow I'm, I'm going to be posting yeah. those links uh, in the uh, chat tool for everybody uh, to access in, in just a moment as uh, tomorrow is answering. So um, if you do have any questions, go ahead and use the Q&A tool. Uh, the first question that's come in tomorrow is, uh, is there a way to have collections excluded from the automation process, such as back file collection and yearly ebook collections that don't change over time? We have ongoing problems with portfolios being incorrectly deleted from such collections. Absolutely, absolutely. But this depends on the clarification we receive from the provider. If providers tell us that this collection does indeed need to have deletions in it, then it means that the provider does not uh, want specific uh, items to be seen as part of this collection. Now, sometimes providers think that they need to, to keep a collection as a current mirror of what they're selling, but that's not necessarily true because sometimes institutions buy in perpetuity titles that are uh, will that will be removed in the future and will not be part of that collection so the question is how to best uh, manage this with with the provider and letting them know sometimes that they do need to maintain two separate um, uh, feeds for the same collection, one to uh, to be available for uh, activating in perpetuity, and the other to reflect current sales models that they have and what they offer to uh, libraries. Okay, uh, the next question that's come in uh, is: Are votes from the community needed for new content from existing providers in the idea exchange? No, absolutely not. Any uh, existing Collect, any new collection requests from existing providers will be uh, added to the queue and to our ongoing uh, discussions with uh, with existing providers and voting voting can just show uh, a matter of urgency uh, but you can also add comments for the ideas and share and, dis and and open discussions on these ideas. And you don't need to put your votes into uh, new content requests from existing providers. And again, this is only for new collections or enrichment or um, uh, either for the knowledge bases or CDI, but not for titles that are missing from existing collections. If there are titles that are missing from existing collections, this requires uh, going through cases. Okay, uh, we don't have any other questions uh, that have come in, but uh, I do have a question uh, just to, to ask you about the idea exchange. How many votes do people get to uh, use in the content section of the idea exchange? Right, so since we started this process, we doubled the number of votes because we realized that content is not like other features in, in product. It's not like a button in Alma or a facet in CDI. It's something that's needed year round for teaching and research. So we double the votes and uh, we hope that will make a better, uh, uh, that will make things easier for the uh, for community members to express their needs and urgencies. And okay. also, yeah, just. Yeah, uh, how, how many votes are there then? Oh, sorry, 50. Ah. 50. <laughs> we doubled from 25 to 50, yeah. Cool. Uh, well, I uh, I did post a link to the idea exchange specific to the content section. So uh, if anybody hasn't investigated that, go ahead and uh, 
go ahead and do that. Um, but uh, tomorrow, if you want to do some concluding remarks, that would be fantastic. Yeah, I think we're uh, really heading on a good direction of uh, taking new content uh, more uh, more organized. We're also revising internally how we go over the the content requests, and there are so many dependencies um, in, within different teams in the content operations and going outside with the providers and with the legal teams. So putting the whole thing into a more structured. Uh, structured process, I think, will improve. I do hope that you're already seeing a change. I think that monitoring some requests, we see that uh, time of, of handling and, and adding new collections from requests to the actual appearance of that collection has shortened for several uh, examples. It's it's a long ship to uh, to turn around, but I think we are uh, going on the on the right path, and I do want to thank the community for all your input and and assistance in this process.